Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to WoW Dragonflight, and our Lightforge Draenei Death Knight playthrough. Thank you guys for clicking on the video and joining me here today. I do appreciate it, and I hope you are all doing well. We are going to continue things here in Ashenvale Forest. What brings you here? Farewell, Delnadris. I am listening. Peace be with you. Ishnuala. Apparently we have to wait for the roleplay. I am honored. Greetings. May the stars guide you. Alright, so we have to collect Elune's tier. That's out to the northeast. And, or we could go after the Furbolgs. Kill 15 of them to the northwest. Let's go fight the Furbolgs first. And then we'll swing over and get Elune's tier. Corrupting Influence. Deliver the Troll Charm to Rain Wolfrunner at Astronaut and Ashenvale. Here's a question for some of you people who are very good Death Knights out there. Um, is two-handed frost spec a thing that you can do in retail? Like, frost spec with a two-hander. Is that a viable spec slash weapon? Or do you have to dual wield still as frost spec? I'd, I'd like to try frost spec at some point to see the other DPS spec. But I also just kind of want to wield a, a two-handed weapon, because that's kind of what I'm into. And I, I don't really... For some reason, I, I really don't like dual wielders who wear plates, like, aesthetically. Like, I, I never liked the Fury Warrior as much as I like arms. And I kind of feel that way about the Death Knight, too. That I, I don't really want to see this guy with two one-handers, you know what I mean? I, I, like, I like the two-handed weapon. So yeah, if you know if that's viable or not, let me know. I could look it up, but I'd rather hear it from you guys.
Let's see if we can find a way through the hills here to get to our Illumin's tier. This road might lead us right to it. I feel like in the Cataclysm, <laughs> somehow in the Cataclysm, um, Ashenvale gained more infrastructure. Like, there's more roads now than there ever have been. Maybe that's because of, like, the armies having to travel through, or just, like, the proliferation of the Furbolgs in this case. But yeah, they definitely, uh, definitely put a lot more of these little dirt trails in to make the terrain much more passable than it was back in Classic Era. Alright, we have officially leveled two different times from discovering a new area. I just need to point that out because it's not that common, especially in retail for that to happen. Uh, now what do I want to do here? Mind Freeze seems like a must, it's just like a straight interrupt. Cleaving Strikes. Scourge Strike hits up to seven additional enemies while you remain in Death and Decay. We're gonna want this for later. Um, we're gonna want that for later, especially for uh, when we're in Dragonflight content and every pull is like a 2, 3, or 4 pull. But I don't think we want it now. Let's go ahead and we'll grab Mind Freeze for now. I think that's just like a must. I'm kind of still wondering about an explanation about how my ghoul is sometimes with me, like most of the time he's with me as like a perma permanent pet, and then other times he just kind of disappears. I guess I'm not really <laughs> understanding the Death Knight pet mechanic in this case. Because aside from this button here, which is just a cooldown, like I don't seem to have a way to manually call him forth. I kind of thought that maybe if there was just a body around and I went into combat, maybe he would spawn. But yeah, I don't know what it is. One of you guys probably knows what the deal is with the Death Knight pet. Because I don't know what it is. I've looked through the spell book and this is the only thing that I can find uh, as far as summoning. Now someone mentioned rune forging that all I needed was Rune of the Fallen Crusader, but we have to be at the rune forge to do that. Which, I, I guess I'd have to go through the death gates. Yeah, I, I guess I, I'd want to set my hearthstone first. Before I, before I do that. It is set in Astronar. So, maybe we just go do this really quick. Yeah, I, I probably should just put a rune carving on my weapon. Now the kind of the annoying thing is I guess we're gonna have to do that every single time we get a weapon. Yeah, like that might be... Depending on how quickly we, we get weapons, that might be troublesome. <laughs> Many deals for a friend of the <laughs> Let's vendor everything except for potential upgrades here. That's not one of them. Strength Stam, but no Crit Strike. I'm gonna make sure I have the appearance. Ah, uh, the rune forges are below, right?
So this engraves the weapon with a rune that has a chance to heal you for 6% of your max HP and increase your total strength by 15% for 15 seconds. Wow, I guess. Like, big wow. That, that seems actually really huge. Uh, what's Razor Ice? 1% extra weapon damage as frost damage and increase that's so that that I would use this if I were frost spec. Okay. Awesome. Farewell. Good luck, friend. Goddess, watch over you. Alright, we need to take the troll charm we found to Hephaestus Pilgrim at Astronar. Del Madras. So, like, right nearby? Yeah, he, he's like literally 12 feet away. We've been walled up for far too and long. And he's a warden. Watch your back. Good day. The Furbold Covet, that which does not belong to them, there's a property to the carving that solely corrupts those that aren't trolls. As I understand it, the Furbold have done this sort of thing before. <laughs> they directly reference in the quest how it's just like a remake of the other quest that we were given from a troll in the Zorm Strand back in Vanilla. You Collect eight troll charms. Like, even when they remade the old world, <clears throat> they were like, how can we do as little lifting as possible? And it, it seems like they did reuse a lot of the same quests. Like, this quest with the little girl is the same quest. It, it's kind of strange in that way. How the Cataclysm is supposed to be in the future. It, it's supposed to be this big event that happened, but, but some of the quest lines are still exactly as they were. Or, if they're not exactly, like the one we just took, it's not exactly as it was, but we're, we're doing the same thing that we did. You know, we're doing the same thing. Good luck. Uh, I wonder, because like, so the next time that we get a world remake, will that purge all of the vanilla quest? <laughs> if we get one more world remake, will that get it to a point in the game where like none of those quests exist in, in any form? Or, you know, will we get a world remake and you'll come to a you'll come to Astronar and there will still be the sick night elf girl? <laughs> will that will that same plot thread and plot and quest still exist? You know what I mean? Or or will it truly be a remade world? We'll have to wait and see. I am Deliver the glowing gem to Shaldrin at Rainwood Tower. Be careful. She's a dryad. Let's go north first and we'll go after the troll charms. Uh, maybe we go this way and then we take the trailhead. The music here is like a little bit darker in tone than it was originally in vanilla, but I kind of like it.
I I'm really shocked that we haven't gotten dismounted yet. Let's see how long that lasts. I think they uh, leashed off of us. Um, let's, maybe we take the quest. Yeah, I didn't see this guy. <laughs> let's, let's hear him out. Yes, I speak your tongue, Drain. I, we Furbolg have been through this kind of corruption before. Not long ago, our leader stole the idol of Remulos. The demon-tainted thing ensorcelled the entire tribe, and our redemption was barely delivered by a druid known as Brol Bearmantle. So things have, ch we're doing the same things. They're giving us, like, history lessons while we kind of do the same exact quest. It's weird. Kind of. As weird as it could be, I still feel like this is the best way to level up in World of Warcraft Retail. The best way to level up is just to hit up some Old World Zones. It's so much more relaxing and fun and cathartic than trying to do BFA content and deal with like all the pointless story, all the meaningless cutscenes. Uh, the mob density, like, being off the hook for the entire playthrough, like, it's so much more enjoyable just coming here and doing this. Uh, so, Bloodclaw Collection. I, I don't think there's an escort in here now. I thought maybe there would still be the escort quest. But I don't think so. See, as strong as we are, we're starting to take some damage. You know what I mean? Like, we've when we first started, we were just basically one-shotting everything. Now we're at a point where, yeah, we're still strong, but you get a couple things hitting us at once. And uh, they, they can do some damage to us. Having our pet out is very helpful, but, uh, you know, since I can't find a way to keep him out permanently, that could be part of our issue.
Uh, that might be a little bit more than we can handle. Yeah, especially since our uh, our buddy's about to disappear. We got lots of magma totems going off. Not great for us. Hey, we killed them, but they killed us. All it took was a bad pull to bring us down. Uh, even in retail, we're not invincible. That's why I often say, you know, retail is not just super easy. Despite, like, the start we had and how it seemed. You're not going to go through the whole playthrough one-shotting things. Quite a long graveyard run, even in the Cataclysm. It, it still will make you think twice about, uh, you know, maybe pulling a bit more carefully next time around. Alright, and with that, we can get out of here. Though we'll probably have to fight our way out to be safe.
the only other thing I really wish they would adjust in the time walking campaigns, especially when you go back to like the Cataclysm and around that time period, I really wish they would increase the amount of XP that you get from enemies. Like, just drastically increase the amount that you get from enemies. Because then you might want to actually like fight your way through an area like that, you know, as opposed to doing what we did. <laughs> Which was chain a million enemies and then probably, yeah, run to our death. How many did we have? We had to have a lot of them on us, you know? Yeah, I wish there was a reason to want to, like, actually fight through those guys, like, how you would have had to do back in the, in the day a little bit. In Cataclysm, though, I think you got your mount at 20. So, yeah, you, you probably would have your mount by the time you got to Ashen Vale in the Cataclysm, I think. I'm pretty sure that's when they dropped the mount requirement to level 20. And made it, it was basically, like, you know, cost pennies compared to what it used to. I, I, I almost want to try to turn in the quest as a ghost. Not gonna work. Alright, he wants us to speak with Sabina Pilgrim at the southern edge of Thunder Peak's lava flow. Long live, Greyman. And for talent points, we're back over in the Unholy Tree. I think I have to grab this instant, and it's a 30 second cooldown. And we'll be able to do it like, you know, we'll have him out most of the time. I, I guess is what we were working to. For some reason, I thought he was a permanent pet. But seeing as how he's been acting and then looking at this talent, I don't think that he is. And it's almost like you don't have to go that route at all. You know, this seems like a route where your pet becomes more powerful. And this seems like a route where your dots become more powerful. I'm going to focus on going here, I think. Although, look, we need this. We need to see. That's the weird thing. It's like this seems pet focused, but then this is increasing our maximum runic power. So we absolutely have to have that. Uh, but I want Outbreak as well. Deals 9 damage to the target and inflicts, infects all nearby enemies with virulent plague. Improved Festering Strike. Epidemic. Causes each of your virulent plagues to flare up, dealing more damage. And an additional 8 shadow damage to all other enemies near them. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> this, this is going to be a fun class, I think. Uh, no matter how we spec it. It, it seems like it's going to have a lot of like AoE potential. Which is, to me, will probably feel different than the Warlock, the way I had the Warlock spec, just... We kind of lacked powerful AoE, I felt like. Uh, okay, so let, let's head up to the tier of Loon. We need to get that done. Let's go that way first. I feel like we're not going to be able to go, like, off the beaten roads much here. Yeah, we'll stick to the road. There will probably be a trailhead, a way that we can go, like, off of the main road to, like, a trail. I don't think it's going to be this one here to our left. The, the main road might just take us where we have to go. We'll see. Maybe we can cut through here. The terrain ahead, it looks fiery, but it, it doesn't look impassable. Uh, but we're going to encounter the turn in here. We, we might as well do that. Okay, yeah, it looks like, it looks like the, the moon well is going to be on the other side of the lava flow. 
I didn't realize that an actual volcano erupted here. Did you guys know that? <laughs> oh, that's what that guy's about. Okay, I see now. Ashenville will burn, he says. I need to rebind my uh, button to get rid of my UI. Alright. Let's get going. Oh, there she is. Get Gavin and get going. Keep your chin up, eh? All right, and now the uh, Earth guy. He's got a quest. Use the gift of the Earth to fill eight lava fissures. All right, seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I do feel like. We should have done this first, but we'll, we'll just kind of head that way. Um, point of fact, this guy is an elite. <laughs> point of fact. We can interrupt the lava strike, that's good. He's an elite, but I mean, we were able to take him out and fine. I wonder if we're just supposed to avoid them. They don't seem to have a loot table. But I mean, I'm gonna fight them because they're they're not terribly hard to fight, but... I wonder if like back in the day you were just meant to like kind of avoid them. I, I guess eventually we'll find out in Cataclysm Classic, won't we? Yeah, see, the, the problem with not giving players a chunk of XP from kills is that it kind of creates a gameplay style where, like, you'll start choosing to avoid fights. You'll start choosing to avoid fights. You don't want to create a scenario in a video game where, especially an MMORPG that's, like, so much about the gameplay of your class. You don't want to create a situation where people feel like they should avoid fights because the fight, the reward for the fight isn't worth the effort of the fight or the fun of the fight. 
you shouldn't do that. And that's what happens when, like, yes, the enemies give experience when we kill them, but if you look at the XP bar, like, it's a number of experience that doesn't touch the overall experience that you need to level. It's very small, and it doesn't move your bar at all. It's, it's almost like pretend kill XP. And what that does, you know, is it, is it says like, well, I see a bunch of guys ahead of me. I could fight them all and have that gameplay experience, or I could just weave around them carefully and avoid everybody. And I think the second thing is less fun and like not intended gameplay. I don't think it's intended gameplay, but it's what happens when you don't reward people for each fight. Like you have to give them a sufficient amount of kill XP. You have to have the potential for decent things to drop. And yeah, I really wish we could see a return to that. Just just let me get chunks of my XP from, from killing enemies like we would do back in the day. Of course, now the water guy wants us. He wants us to kill 10 of the lava ragers, you know, like the ones we've been fighting already that were elites. He, he wants us to take those guys on. I'm wondering if, like, did I just miss that one? Could I have picked both those up at once? It, it's possible that I just missed it. Because, yeah, he definitely wants us to fight 10 of these elites now. That would have been the compulsion I needed to fight them, yeah. Oh, we've got this additional pet kind of helping us for the quest. Okay. So yeah, we, we were probably supposed to have both of these quests together, and then this guy would have been like, back in the day, he'd be what was helping you actually fight these guys. Because I bet in Cataclysm, you, you wouldn't really be able to do it on your own, you know? I'm noticing that there are times when we don't have the runic power to death strike or death coil and we don't have any runes available. I'm assuming like eventually we'll be at a point where we have ways to like generate more runes.
And now the wind guy. Now this one, I don't... Yeah, this one wasn't here. So, this is new. Use the powers of the Whirling Vortex to slay Lord Magmathar. Okay. Uh, it's a vehicle thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, vehicle thing. Okay, extinguish flames. Um, okay, shouldn't have popped that one yet. Should have read the cooldown first. Sky lightning, blast Lord Magmathar. Vortex vengeance, envelop him with the power of the vortex, dealing nature damage. Return to the Vortex and extinguish flames. Extinguish his lordly immolate. Maybe used once every 15. Oh gosh. Um, let's start shocking him. Very exciting, yeah. <laughs> it's like they have these big moments, like that was a big moment, but because of the vehicle quest was kind of lame, it, it didn't feel like a big moment. Um, okay, let's let's do this. We we are flying at a, at a weird tilt. It's uh, <laughs> it's a little bit strange. What's your story? We are bound by a common enemy. Look at that, already we're going from item level 19 to item level 34. That one is an upgrade. Alright, and uh, now it looks like we're just going to move on down the road. Um, yeah, we, we have some problems here. Let's just take care of these guys. There we go. At ease, soldiers. At ease. I'm sure we're going to get quests to fight these guys. Ah, the great outdoors. This must have this must be the current Dryad models, right? This was not a Cataclysm model. It's uh too different looking and has too many pixels, I think. This must be Dragonflight. What is nature's call? Find the wooden key and use it to obtain the iron shaft portion of Dartle's rod. Context, please. Context. Okay. Is this guy like a good guy? Finally, my redemption is at hand. I've waited long for this day and I think I know how to help you in turn. Okay. My former clan, the Felmusk of Nightrun, raided Fallen Sky Lake some time ago, stealing the moonstones that were unique to the area. Those moonstones are known to have great healing properties and surely can be used to cure the little girl that lies sick in Astronar. Okay, so maybe they changed this one a little bit. I don't remember us working with, like, a redeemed satyr. Also, again, with the character models, this is not a Cataclysm model. They've done so much kind of, like, not secret work, but work that you don't think about a lot when, the, when it comes to seeding the old world in retail with all the new character models, all the new NPC models. They've been doing it. Like, it's been happening. 
you know like the knolls and and, the, and stuff like that and then like these two who are like th there's no way that these were cataclysm guys what brings you here recover 10 laughing sister corpses del madras Anything else going on? Heavy armor merchant. Greetings. Asha Fela, how may I help? Del Nadris. Yeah, it's really crazy, guys. When I do the Cataclysm content, I'm just reminded more and more of how Cataclysm was such a better battle for Azeroth than Battle for Azeroth was. All the battling in Battle for Azeroth happened in, like, the war campaigns, which were not very beefy for campaigns. They were level-gated, so you weren't able just to work them through and see, like, the complete story. You, you got gated in some way. I don't quite remember if it was level-gating or something else. But yeah, and then when you play Cataclysm, all these zones are actually at war. You see the war in the main questing of, of the expansion. And that's something that in BFA you don't really see the war. You see the stuff going on uh, in Zandalar and in Kul Tiras. And you're dealing with those internal problems of those nations much more than you're dealing with uh, the battle for Hazaroth, you know? Head outside and destroy the horde. Okay. Fair.
All right, deliver Sentinel Maria's report to Sentinel Farsong at Silverwing Grove in Ashenvale. Very well. So we are already headed out of here. We unlocked Skull Mats. Okay, we have a Death Knight point available. Uh, do we want to grab my Time Magic Cell? Maybe. Successfully interrupting an enemy with Mind Freeze grants 10 runic power. Okay, that seems really good. Blinding Sleet. This is an ability. Targets in a cone in front of you are blinded. Okay, so it's like a disorient. Permafrost, your auto attack damage grants you an absorb shield equal to 40% of the damage dealt. That just sounds like by default good. Yeah, damage shields on melee classes? Yeah, please. I'll take that. That's cool. Alright. Guys, I think this is going to be a good spot to take a little bit of a break for today. Uh, I'm going to hearth us back to Astronaut so we can get a little bit of rested. And then we will uh, we'll start out next time. We'll come back over this way. We'll search out the wooden key. And we'll do Fallen Moonstones. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you are enjoying the series, leaving a like, subbing to the channel, ringing the bell, all things that help me out immensely. And I very much appreciate those that do. Until next time, guys, take care of yourselves out there in the real world and take care of each other. And we will see you back here again very soon. Bye for now.